My dad came to visit over Christmas, so we decided to go on a little trip and see a new place. I hope you enjoy coming along with us as we explore the underrated, lesser known trails in Zion and Bryce Canyon National Park. Zion National Park. We just did the Paras, I don't know how you pronounce it, Paras Trail. It goes along the river. It's flat, it's paved, there's multiple bridges that you can cross and there's just like a beautiful view of like the river and I think it's the Watchman Peak in the background which was super cool. It's a one-way trail, we didn't really want to go back the same way we came so we thought we'd catch the shuttle at the end of it but it's closed. So now we are walking along the road. I kind of recommend it. You have some good views that you wouldn't really be able to see. If you're driving. Just walked to the lower emerald falls. Some of the trail was closed though because it was like icy. But it was pretty cool. The sun is starting to come out from behind the clouds and it's like illuminating the mountains behind me. It's like super pretty. We made it to the top of the falls on the other side. The trail just keeps going and you have to walk through this cold water to keep going. So I think we're gonna go back and then have some lunch. the shuttle to stop nine which is the last stop that it goes We're up near the narrows i don't think we'll do the narrows it's a little cold and it's been raining recently so it could be a bit don't too much water but we'll do like the riverside trail that goes up to it and see what it's like it's a bit colder up here there's a pretty cool view behind me as well and there's like a little waterfall is formed because of the rain didn't make it to the beginning of the Narrows as the trail was closed halfway down but we did walk along the river, saw an amazing waterfall and got some good photo opportunities. got one more walk to do, that's the Canyon Overlook Trail. I saw online it's good to do at sunset, so that's where we're gonna head now. The sun is getting lower and coming out. The Canyon Overlook Trail can't be accessed via the shuttle. You do have to drive through a long tunnel to get to it, but it's well worth it because the view is amazing. It was probably my favorite spot. So the walk to get here was a little bit scary in my opinion, but the view I think was worth it. Look at that. I am back in Zion. We'll just be here for the morning. We're gonna do a little walk. It snowed a bit last night actually, just like light. And so if you can see behind me, there's like some snow now covering some of the tops of the mountains, which is really pretty. I haven't seen snow in a while. For our last hike in Zion, we chose the Watchman Trail as it's easily accessible right near the visitor center. Take the world, put it on my wall. Makes you feel this Watchman Trail. It's a bit muddy at the beginning, but it's not too bad now. And like, look at the views already. And we haven't even made it to the top. We've made it to the top. It's amazing. There's some sunlight coming in there. And then behind me, there's some snow-capped rocks and mountains. Definitely worth it. It's a good, steady incline. Find the reason why I survive. It's a lot more deserty up here. You can see a difference in the plants. Oh, some of the cactus got on my jacket. It's not fun. 
stars so fade That bluish comet after finishing the Watchman Trail, which was quite muddy, we drove through the Zion once again and headed towards Bryce Canyon. It's about an hour and 15 minute drive and just within that short amount of time, the landscape changed dramatically. Zion is about 4,000 feet above sea level, whereas Bryce is around 9,000 feet. So it was much, much colder. So we just got to Bryce, it's about four in the afternoon. There is snow everywhere here. So winter wonderland is freezing. My hands are like really, really cold right now. Because it's winter, probably more than half the park is closed. The rectangle area in the map is the only area you can drive without chains and or a four wheel drive. walk from sunrise point to sunset point it's pretty amazing i say amazing a lot but like i don't know another word to describe it spectacular there you go the rock pillars you are seeing here are called hoodoos and bryce has the world's largest concentration of them it's recommended in winter to wear chains for your shoes when you go hiking they grip on and you're much less likely to slip multiple people ended up losing theirs they were just left on the ground so i put them on and it does make walking a lot easier so Highly recommend if you're coming in the snow. So it is like 9.30 a.m. day two. The sun is out. It's very glary. We are just walking along the rim trail. The snow is literally shining and glittering in the light. It's so pretty. Catch it, put it in a jar to have and to hold. To save for later, you cannot trust it to come again. To wait for you to find a pen and fill the paper with the message. Oh, and we're going down a little bit of the Charles Tower Bridge, and this guy just overtook us, and I didn't record it, but he was wearing no shirt, walking as if there was. Like it was a warm summer's day. It's like negative five degrees Celsius. At the moment, it was pretty hilarious. 50 million years ago, this area was originally a lake until an earthquake shifted the land up above sea level, exposing the rocks at the bottom of the lake to the elements. The hoodoos you see today are a result of weather erosion, mainly ice and rain. And it was so fun to get to walk amongst them and see them close up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Find it sleeping in its nest before it wakes up. Touch it gently. So we made it to the end of the Tower Bridge Trail. The bridge is up behind me. You have like a view looking up at it, which is kind of cool. So I think overall, this is a pretty easy trail. It's very gradual going down. So now we have to go back up. So we'll see how that goes. It's pretty down here. You're in amongst the trees and the hoodoos and rocks. You definitely get some nice views going down. I enjoyed it. It was a good trail. <laughs> So we got back from the hike, it was tiring going up, it was like walking up sand, but made it and now as soon as we got up it started to snowball and get windy. So we hung out in the visitor center for a bit before heading towards the Mossy Cave Trail, our last stop at Bryce. It's just outside the park and it's a pretty easy walk that takes you past a waterfall which was frozen over and a cave filled with mosses in the summer and icicles in the winter. As far as Utah goes for a winter destination, I would still recommend it because even though some trails were closed, there were way less lines, way less people, and the snow makes everything look just a little bit more magical. I think I'm gonna end this vlog here. Until next time, see you later.